Today's talk is about John Muir and the Poodle People. It's about personality types. Now, as the saying goes, there are two types of people, those who divide people into two types and those who don't. Well, in fact, in narrative psychology, we see people as falling into four categories, but the way they make themselves manifest depends on the subject matter in which those personality types are applied. In everyday life, things are so confusing with all the social interactions and different kinds of environments, work environment, home environment, subject matter, everything everybody's interested in, hobbies, and they interact and they collide and they collude all the time, and it leads to a big mess when you're trying to understand what these personality types are. But if, like me, you go out in the Quebec country, uh, specifically on the John Muir Trail, and spend a lot of days out there far away from civilization, when the people begin to drift into groups, they start to clump into these personality types, and they regress to their basic interests and their basic camaraderie shrip between each other. Is that a word? But in fact, you can see there are four distinct kinds of personalities that can be seen in the open outdoors once you've removed all the distractions. Now, the first of these is called the Muirs. The Muirs are up here. And down in this corner are their diametrically opposed opposites, the Poodle People. But there are two more. Sort of in a companion relationship, not identical but similar, are the Yo-Yos. And down at this corner, you're going to find the Campfire People. Now I'll give you a brief description of each, and then I'll talk about how they interact, and then I'll talk about how each of us, no matter which personality type we are, can learn to get along with and even perhaps step into the shoes of and appreciate the other three personality types. So first, let's start with the one I am up here. That's the Muirs. Now, the Muir is a loner, but not somebody who's antisocial per se, just someone who really likes to enjoy going out under the canopy of the stars, alone, appreciating it, not thinking about oneself so much, but thinking about all the grandeur that surrounds one. They tend to hike alone. You see a lot of these people going down the trail, just one person, and occasionally they'll hook up with a smaller group. But in fact, they're out there to experience everything without the distraction of other people. So they have a direct relationship with the external world in kind of a, um, an appreciation. Not a, a passive relationship, because they're certainly out there doing it, but just they want to, to envelop themselves in the environment and other people are distraction, like if you're listening to your favorite song and someone comes in and starts a conversation. Mirror people don't particularly like that. Well, the companion relationship, I'll go there next. Over here are the yo-yos. And why are they called yo-yos? Because that's what they call themselves. They're people who go down a trail and they try to make a certain number of miles per day, get to a certain destination campsite. They're the people who go all the way to the end of a trail, even the John Muir Trail, even the Pacific Crest Trail. John Muir is 212 miles, Pacific Crest Trail is like 2,200 miles. They'll go to the end of it, turn around and come back, and try to beat the record for doing a complete round trip. And since they go up and they go back, they're called yo-yos. That's what they call themselves. I happened to encounter one just uh, last weekend when we were going up to the top of Mount Pinos here in the mountain community in which we live. We were up about 9,000 feet, and there was this fellow who looked like he was about 20 years older than me, which is going some, and he was jogging up and down the mountain. Well, we walked up there. He jogged up, and then he jogged back down to the parking lot at the staging area, and then he passed us again as he jogged up and passed us again as he came back. That's definitely a yo-yo kind of guy. He was looking at his feet, he was looking at the rocks, he was looking at his, his watch to see how much time he had. Like I said, as an older guy, he still wears a watch. But he was a yo-yo. Now, the third type of personality is the, before we get to the poodle people, because I just love that name, are the campfire people. They're down here, and they're opposite the yo-yo. The yo-yo needs to make his mileage, and so he can't congregate with others and interact with them. And uh, oh, hold on just a second here. Apparently, I have a phone call coming in. Hello? Well, yeah, actually, I'm in the middle of a video recording, so um, uh, perhaps a little later. I, I told Teresa I was recording, but okay, bye. All right, business intrudes. Um, my business in narrative psychology, that was my partner, Chris Huntley, who, in fact, is the co-creator of our Dramatica Theory of Story from which we learn narrative psychology. So sorry for the interruption. Okay, to continue, the campfire people down here. Well, the muirs over here and the yo-yos over here are companion because they're both loners, but one of them's looking at the environment and the other one's looking at making the destination. Pro uh, process people, journey people versus results people as an example. Another 
manifestation down here the campfire people are anathema to the guy who's trying to make the destination because these guys will clump together they'll go as slow as the slowest member they'll hang around the campfire they'll roast marshmallows they'll talk over stories of the trail during the day while the other guy gets his sleep gets up at the crack of dawn and takes off so he always gets frustrated with these guys and maybe he can walk with them on the trail as long as they keep up but he's not going to slow up for them and he can't keep their schedule and he's always going to break away from the group but up here with the mewers, that hand's better. The mewers where I am, the ones who look at the entire thing, they're the ones, I'm sorry, another cereal. Cereal? Oh, I put it back in the cabinet, I thought. Well, then maybe it's on the center island and I left it there, or, well, I don't think I brought it up here. Okay, breakfast intrudes this time. Okay, so to continue, uh, over here in this corner then are the poodle people, and poodle people are the ones that you see as day hikers. Uh, we describe those poodle people because when we went out to Camp Curry, you see that they have this, um, uh, these people come out wearing like the, the big sunglasses with the sequins, and they wear the big pink outfit all the way down, including the shoes and the socks, and they walk poodles, and they take their baby strollers, but not like hikers would, where they have a, a hiking stroller and they've got little saddlebags on it. They come out with the city stuff and they go around the rocks and everything as far as they can get on a day hike up to the close destinations like Yosemite Falls or, or something of that nature. But they'd never make it up the Mist Trail to see Nevada Falls. And if they did, or Vernal Falls, if they did, they'd never go even higher to see Nevada Falls because it's just, just too much for them to handle. And of course, Muir people over here look at these poodle people and we we look down on them. And I mean, the name, Poodle People, I'm a Muir, Muir, John Muir, the great, wonderful out outdoor guy. I call the guys who are destination-oriented yo-yos, because they call themselves that. It's an excuse. Campfire people, I can sort of relate to. I, you know, they're the ones you can hang around or will help you in a pinch. But the Poodle People, I got no need for them because they turn on their radios at night in Camp Curry, and they've got their music, and they've got their headphones. You can't talk to them. They don't see what's going on. They don't appreciate the grandeur. Okay, this is where I'm coming from. But you can see that those four types tend to congregate. Now, I promised you I'd talk to you about how you can get along with them a little bit. Well, the way you get along with them is actually you put yourself into their shoes just a little bit. It's not that you're ever going to see things their way, but you can see why, if they see things that way, what they do is important to them, and the way they do it is the way that they will be fulfilled. And if they did it your way, they wouldn't be. All right, who's this guy, this loner? It's like an astronomer. It's like a person who's an author who sits in a room and, and works on that, or someone who does special effects in the movies by sitting in a computer, or a computer technician, a computer nerd, as opposed to a person who's on a computer down in the campfire area, and they're involved, back in the city, with socializing all over Facebook and all over the internet, Twitter and, and Google Plus, and, um, and I don't even know because I'm a mirror, okay? So that kind of interaction where you have to be involved with people, but you do it as peers, you do it as equal members, and you're not distracted or interrupted or frustrated when you end up with, um, with something coming into the middle of your viewing of the night sky. Instead, you sit there under the stars together as a group and swap stories. And I can see that. I mean, I've kind of always longed for that, being a loner, to have that group experience. And it took me till I was about 60, 61 now. It took me till I was about 60 before I started to see just how I could relate to those people simply by saying, if I find my own time to be on my own up in that area and enjoy that grandeur, then if I say when I'm going to be around other people, I don't see them as annoyance, I see them as a new opportunity, an opportunity to interact and share, and then I enrich myself. Now, while this would be my first choice always is to be out there, which is why I take a lot of photographs in the wilderness and post them all over the internet, try to emulate Ansel Adams and whatnot, when it comes down to being with people, I always feel a little bit of a hole because I don't do it enough, and I long for sitting around that campfire. So, I can appreciate that, and in fact, I can determine I'm going to go out and make it happen. I'm going to go out and connect with these people, even though this is always my first choice. If I satisfy that a little bit, naturally, like with anything, the motivation level goes down. Once you've eaten a bunch of candy, you reach a point where you don't need the candy anymore, but there may be other things you're hungry for, like human companionship, so I can get to there. And how about this yo-yo guy over here? How can I relate to that yo-yo guy? Wherever he it is, it's falling off screen. He's so fast trying to make his destination, he can't even stay in the picture. Okay, the yo-yo guy, well, I can look at my own experience and say there are times when I absolutely had to get something done by a certain time because it was meaningful to me. If I didn't accomplish something by a certain time, something else good 
that I wanted wouldn't happen. So how do I do that? Well, what I do is I say, this guy does that all the time. I could never do that. But sometimes I can go from the way I'm feeling about wanting to be out in the grandeur, fill that up. Maybe I've even filled up spending some time with the campfire people. And then this other kind of personality, I then would say, let me walk with you and exercise to try to achieve some fitness. Let me get myself ready for a longer hike by trying to keep up with you while we're doing a shorter training hike. And that's the kind of thing I could do. But once I get on the trail, once I'm there for actually being in the wilderness, I'm not going to want to go through it all with blinders on from my perspective and just do the yo-yo thing. I'm going to want to go out there and stop and take pictures and look at the sky. Then we come to the poodle people. The poodle people. The ones that, you know, it shows you just to call them poodle people. The first thing I can do to relate to them is stop calling them poodle people because I'm sure they don't think of themselves that way. But it's directly, diametrically opposed to who I am. And therefore, that's where the greatest conflict or the greatest differential occurs that could potentially lead to conflict. But it doesn't have to lead to conflict. I can look at them and say, those are the folks who are getting together saying, let us each bring something to the table like a potluck and let us revel in all of these different things we have brought. So, well, this group and the campfire people are looking for the comradeship, 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 friendship, brotherhood. Okay, they're looking for that. They don't necessarily care about what somebody's brought or what somebody hasn't brought. For these people, they're the folks who in the city, they share these wonderful things they have their clothing, which gives an impression, and then they look at somebody else's. They may be in competition, they may be keeping up with the Joneses, it may all be status, but that's only looking at the negative side that a mewer person would normally say, that's who they are because I find them so different from myself. But in fact, they're bringing those things. They're saying, sample this, sample who I am today, sample what I have, and I will sample who you are. And in that, they look at these objects again, the external world. And so I'm looking at the external world of the majesty of natural creation, they're looking at the external world of the majesty of human creation. The campfire people are looking at the essence of who they are in relation to everyone else, and the yo-yo is looking at who he is in relationship to his own personal best and what he can achieve. So if you look at all of those, they basically form the I, you, we, and they, because that's what we're looking at always, is I, okay, is there, and you is over here with the poodle people looking at how you're dressed and how what you have. Uh, the uh, we perspective of that uh, campfire group that's saying this is who we are. And the they perspective up here in the corner of the yo-yos who say they're all doing that. They get in my way, uh, you know, and therefore, uh, you know, I'm separated from they, okay? As opposed to focusing on what it is from the I perspective, which is the mirror, which is me. And so you can see that once you get out on the trail, people will naturally gravitate towards these. But in the city, in any environment, in the home, in business, you'll find that people will still fall into these I, you, we, and they personality types. And they'll be named different things because we're not talking about what I saw on the John Muir Trail. But use that opportunity where we're away from all of those distractions and could see that those four groups, the Muirs, the poodle people, the yo-yos, and the campfire people, they create a complete quad of four personality types that's then replicated subject matter to subject matter, situation and environment to situation and environment. And that's it for today. Again, I'm Melanie Ann Phillips, and if you want to explore more about these topics, just visit my website at storymind.com.